the theme for this Sunday is A Savior is born to dwell among us. For centuries on Christmas Day the Church has read chapter 1 of John's Gospel. There, in just a few simple words, Scripture describes the indescribable, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, John 1 14. The Word God had spoken in the Garden, promising to send a Savior who was part of mankind, came true. God Himself became flesh and blood, to be born under law, to suffer, and to die that He might redeem us. Today's Sermon Theme A Savior Born to Dwell Among Us Pastor Jeff Heitch Sermon based on, John 1 1 1-14 Christmas Day, December 25, 2022 Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us today for our Christmas Day celebration, which for all pastors is a beautiful day because it's also a Sunday kind of tying it all in together. Uh, next week, next year, it'll be a little bit of a challenge. We got Christmas Eve on Sunday and Christmas Day on Monday. So three opportunities next year, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're here today on this Christmas to celebrate this incredible, amazing event. Christ came. God kept his promise. And we celebrate this wonderful fact and what it means for us. May God be with us and bless us this morning as we gather together in worship and praise the order of service is there for you. We turn to page three in our service folder. We begin with that promise from God that when we call on his name, he's with us. God has made himself known to us in this incredible way that we can connect and relate to him. And so we begin this Christmas Day worship in the name of our God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our Christmas litany. We join in that response. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, to him alone who does great wonders, who by his understanding made the heavens, who spread out the earth upon the waters, who made the great lights, the sun to govern the day, the moon and stars to govern the night. But our iniquities have separated us from our God. Our sins have hidden his face from us so that he will not hear. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. We look for deliverance, but it is far away. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will He harbor His anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's continue with the confession of our sins. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, 
I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and He's given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go back to the Christmas litany for a minute. It talked about when we're in our sins... It's like walking in darkness. Right? It, it envelops us. The darkness, the cold. It's not a fun place to be. Friends, this is what part of our Christmas celebration again is today. That we are assured, have been reminded again now, that yes, all our sins are forgiven. We live in the light of Christ's love. We walk in that light and we want to talk about it. We want to share it. And so we continue with our prayer and praise now. And as we join in these verses of Go Tell It on the Mountain, we will also bring light into our service as we light the Advent wreath and the Christmas candle today. Let's join in that hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, as we celebrate the peace of forgiveness that is ours as we praise our Lord. God is good. Thank you. <clears throat> we can do this. Acapella. Love it. Love it. This was awesome. Dear friends, we rejoice in the forgiveness that is ours. We pray, we praise, we give thanks because He is with us. That's our focus today. And so we continue with that salutation. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> With you. Okay. We continue now with that prayer of the day. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only Son in the flesh may set us free from our old bondage under the yoke of sin through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Children's Kingdom Kids time is here. Kenson, you want to join us up front? Come here, buddy. Come up up here. You can sit right up here. Come here, Kenson. In just a minute, you guys are going to go back and hear an awesome story about something that's special, right? So, good morning. You want to sit? Sit with your friend. There we go. Thank you. Good morning. All right. What a crew. Good morning. All right. Merry Christmas. We celebrate something incredible today. You know what's awesome? Is that people all over the world, not just here in Florida, not just in the United States, people all over the entire world are celebrating this event today. Everyone is saying Merry Christmas. They're not saying it in English. They say it in their different languages. The pastor doesn't know a lot of them. They know a few. English, Spanish. Okay. Hebrew, Greek, Latin, right? All these different languages. And people speak. The one that I do remember, because when I had a chance, I, I live with my family in Hawaii. Meili Kalikimaka. That's, that's Merry Christmas in Hawaiian, Samoan. Meili Kalikimaka. That's about as much as my language expands to. The focus is Merry Christmas. We're celebrating what? What is so important about this day? That who was born? Yeah, God was born. 
Jesus, who created all of this, became one of us. And that's what we're going to talk about in Kingdom Tids today. We're going to thank Jesus and say, Happy birthday to Him. Let's say our prayer. Dear Jesus, thank You for this day and thank You for Your love. Open our ears and our hearts to hear Your Word and to celebrate Your birthday. In Your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back for Kingdom Kids then. Yeah. Okay, Miss K. Ray. There you go, buddy. You can head on the back. Now we focus on the readings for this Christmas day. The first lesson again reminds us, go tell it on the mountain, right? Seems like a, a funny title for a Christmas song or any song, go tell it on the mountain, but it's based right on this reading from Isaiah 52, how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news. And let's understand there is no greater news than this news. Christ is born. What does that mean for the world and you and I? It means that truly our sins are forgiven. We read from Isaiah 52. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, your ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted His people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare His holy arm. In the sight of all the nations and all the ends of the earth, will see the salvation of our God. Here ends our first lesson. Is our epistle lesson from the letter to the Hebrews reading in the first chapter, verses 1 to 9. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things and through whom also He made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. So, He became as much superior to the angels as the name He has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. And speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Here ends our second reading. Invite those that are able to stand for our gospel reading today. We continue with the gospel acclamation, the words from Galatians 4. Hallelujah! But when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. Alleluia. 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 The Gospel reading is from John chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 14. The 14th verse is our sermon text for today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth, the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Savior, dear friends. The word of our Lord upon which we're basing our meditation today is that very unique, special gospel Christmas account from John. Not the Baptist John. He's already up in heaven when John, the gospel writer, writes these words. But he makes a reference to him. He who was sent to prepare the way for the hearts of the people. And the pre -pre preparation was what again our Advent wreath reminds us of today. The season of Advent has been preparing our hearts for this very day, this celebration that we stand in complete and utter awe that He who created all of this in love came to be one of us. He who is greater than all things. That, that's the reading from Hebrews. The introduction to the letter to the Hebrews was, was written to people, direct descendants of Abraham, the Hebrews, the Jewish people, who thought there should be a greater Messiah that would restore Israel as a great political power and nation here on earth. And the writer of the Hebrews, whole focus is to again show and remind all people, but especially the Jewish people that it was first written to, to say, look at Jesus. He's the greatest. And those opening words address something that became a challenge and even today remains a challenge at this time of year. Last night we focused in on that call, that announcement that came from the angels to the lowly shepherd. God in His wisdom used those messengers, which the writer of the Hebrews in our lesson today reminds us are His ministering spirits. They're like flames of fire. And yet, so often people focus and give such an incredible attention to those angels that showed up that night and announced to those shepherds this wonderful event. They were privileged by God to call to be His ministering servants to announce this incredible truth. A Savior has been born. But the angels are not to be worshipped. There was a time when it was like almost every other program on TV was highlighting and promoting angels and people were being lulled into thinking it was good to worship angels. One of Satan's ultimate lies. Because right? he likes to deceive and trick people. And if he can get the attention off of Christ and God, 
in other ways like, well, worship the stars. Worship the angels. Worship yourself. Be religious, but make sure you're worshiping yourself or other things. Don't worship the true God. Then Satan wins. And the writer of the Hebrews reminds us, no, those angels, God's awesome ministering spirits, but they're like flames. They have a purpose, but their purpose wasn't what Christ came and accomplished. He is elevated. He is above all of that. He is superior. There isn't anyone or anything that can touch and compare to the superiority that is Christ. And why do we emphasize that? The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Christmas celebrates this incredible fact that God came and dwelt among us. He came to be one of us. The Gospel acclamation, the verse of the day from Galatians 4, right, talks about how born under the law. That's why He came. That's why He was one of us. Born, he put Himself under that law to keep that law perfectly for all of us. He took on human flesh. This was part of God's plan of salvation. But let's just marvel at this for a minute. He who created all things came and dwelt among us. That Greek word that highlights dwelling can also be translated tenting. He set up a tent. What's unique about tenting? Hopefully, it's short term, right? It's temporary. It's, it, it, it reminds us that it's, it's not forever, and Jesus wasn't going to remain here forever, right? A lot of times, the Christmas message reminds us he was born to die. The whole reason why he was born was so that he would grow, keep everything perfectly, and then die on that cross to take away our sins, which is exactly what he accomplished. And yet He gathers here today. He who created all things. And He dwelt among us. He came to serve as our Lord and Savior. He came to be that One. He who created all things. And what did He do? The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. Right? The irony of that. He made it all! And yet when He comes, the world doesn't recognize Him. The world doesn't want to acknowledge Him. And being God, He knew that. He knew that that was going to happen. And yet in His love... In His incredible mercy, He came anyways. He kept His promise. He kept His Word. And He came and dwelt among us. And in doing that, He brought light into this sin-darkened world. He brought His glory, His power, and His truth. And He lived. He lived perfectly every day among the people. And this is something, again, that we acknowledge and recognize during the Christmas celebration. I made reference to it when I was talking to the the, the kids. But just pause for a minute. Just think about this again. What other event of 
other than Christmas causes the whole world to stop. Christmas still, according to some statistics, Christmas still is the one holiday where, sadly not all, but some of us appreciate the fact it's not all, but the majority of all businesses and stores are shut down. Not even Easter has that impact, which is close to Christmas, but not quite. And yet they are so uniquely tied together, right? But throughout the whole world, people pause at Christmas time. Why? Because they're marveling at this incredible truth. God came and dwelt among us. People don't get it. We don't recognize it. We don't understand it. We can't fathom this. This is an undescribable event that God describes in this powerful and wonderful way. John started his Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then we heard verse 14, then the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That is just such incredible, powerful, and beautiful words there. We gather on Christmas to honor and celebrate this event. But friends, let it be more than that. Understand that He dwells among us today. He's with us. No, we're not like the shepherds who get to go into Bethlehem and see the little baby wrapped in claws, lying in the manger, born of the Virgin Mary as those angels announced. And let's not diminish the incredible announcement that those angels gave. And showing, again, God's care and compassion over all people. Right? Remember those angels? What was the first thing they said to Joseph and Mary, to Elizabeth and Zechariah and the shepherds? Every time when they appeared, they had to say this, but it shows God's care. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Something incredible is happening here. Right? And that truth rings for us today also. That message is there. We've been highlighting that. Don't be afraid. And yet a lot of people say, Pastor, have you looked outside? You know what's going on out there? I, I do somewhat, but even more importantly, God knows it all because He knows everything. And it's God who comes to us again today and says, don't be afraid. Why? Because He dwells with us. Not physically, visibly, but He's present with us today. I reminded you as we began this worship service that when we call on God's name, He promised us to be with us and God can't break a promise. He's here with us today, blessing us through His Word. In that Word, you and I are strengthened and encouraged. That's why we take the time to confess our sins so that you hear that good news. That your sins are forgiven. Not by me, but by Christ. This congregation has called me to announce this absolution, this assurance that your sins are forgiven. And we get to encourage each other. That's what repentance is about. That's why we even say to our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors at times, I'm sorry. And as Christians, you and I get to assure each other, you're forgiven. It's okay. Sin's not okay, but we're okay because Christ dwells with us in His Word. When we gather to celebrate the Lord's Supper, Christ is with us. He says, take and eat, take and drink. This is My body, this is My blood. We believe and confess in the real profession, the real presence. We say Christ is here. We're proclaiming His love and His death for us when we commune because He dwells with us. He's here with us. 
And He strengthens us. And He blesses us. He comforts us. And He encourages us. We deal with trials, hurt, tragedies, losses. Christ is there. And He gives us that smile. And we know, though we're missing that loved one, we're missing that family member, that dear, dear friend, that neighbor. They're with Christ. And Christ dwelt with them here and kept them strong in their faith. And they're now enjoying that eternal reward. And we look forward to that day. And because Christ dwells with us in His Word and in those sacraments, we are strengthened and encouraged in our faith that we won't lose that gift. Satan's going to try to steal it from us. That's why Jesus in love comes to you and I and says, watch out, be on your guard, be alert. He prowls around. He's looking what he can. He's the ultimate enemy of God. He's the ultimate terrorist. He's lost. But he don't care. He's still creating havoc. But we don't have to be afraid. Why? Because a Savior has been born. And He dwells among us today. I bet, let that be your comfort. Let that be your strength. Let that be your confidence. That you walk in this truth and know of the glory of God. Because the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. May the peace of God be with you all. Amen. We turn to page 13 in our service folder. invite you to join with me in making confession of our faith with the words, of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with bringing our offerings of love and thanks to our Lord. For those that are able, I invite you to please stand as we go to our Lord. We join together in that responsive prayer of the church congregations invited to join in on the bold typed phrases. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love towards all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in the lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those who work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. 
Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again, and has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts that blessing from our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Congregation may be seated.